Welcome to our virtual tour of the Yamaha Clavinova CLP795GP Baby Grand Digital Piano. Uh, I want to give you the angles that you won't necessarily see on websites and in the brochures. We're going to go all around the piano and have a look at the housings and the fixings and the fittings, and the keys and the touch panels to give you a really good idea of what it's like close up. Uh, make sure you have a look at our website, check out our deals on new and used digital pianos and organs. So from the front, I'll give you a quick wave there, my reflection in the uh, music rest. The look of this piano is supposed to mimic and give the style of a real concert grand piano, and it does do that, but of course, size-wise, it's much more like a baby grand piano, because a nine-foot piano would not be practical for most houses and from the front here the look is supposed to be just the same as a concert grand piano from the front and they achieve that very nicely with that classical design and from the right hand side of the piano looking underneath the lid this is one of the most striking things about the design of this piano the wooden interior on the inside here where the speakers and the amplifiers are housed and as we go around the back here you can see the operation of the top that is open is to send the sound out towards the audience that would be sat away to the left as we look at it here and I've brought the camera down here to give you an idea of what it looks like uh, on profile it's quite a striking design as you get down to that angle and see how uh, flat it is and moving around to the left hand side we see how reflective the top of this piano, how reflective the entire finish is on this piano. You can even see my boots in the uh, side of the piano there. But look at the Clavinova logo there in silver as well. And I'm going down low here so you can have a look, see what it's like from that low angle on the side. Um, really quite a striking design. And having a close up on the keys here, these are uh, one of the best weighted key mechanisms that you can get on a digital piano. Yamaha have very advanced technology, widely regarded as some of the best in the world. So it will feel just like a traditional piano to play. And these keys, unlike many in the digital piano world, are wooden. As I push one down here, you can see the wooden keys. And this is just a touch more authenticity. Uh, wood is slightly less dense than plastic keys and they seem to respond a little bit faster, particularly when you play fast passages. And the top of the black keys has this graining on the top of it, which you can feel. And again, it's just a little bit more authentic. Now we're going to have a really good close up look at the wooden interior here, at the speaker housings that you can see and the lovely grain on the inside of this piano. And the position of the speakers is important. One, because it is sending the sound upwards into the top, which then projects it outwards towards the audience. But the different positions of these speakers actually have different samples coming out of them. So when you see a, um, a speaker, these little ones here on the right hand side of the piano, as you sit and play it, the samples that the sound that comes out of these speakers is from a sample taken on that side of the piano. So it's the attention to detail that's very, very impressive. And of course gives not just the player, but the audience as well, an authentic listening experience. And you can see in the front of the shot here, the pole that opens, and I'll explain what that secondary pole is for later on. And I'm gonna get really close up to the grain here for you so you can have a very good look. and see where it joins the speaker housing there. Everything is very, very nicely finished off indeed. And again, these two speakers here will have a sample coming out of them when you play from that position on a concert grand piano. That is the position that the sound will be sampled from. And look upwards there, that is a reflection uh, that shows how polished this finish is, that it, it, that is a reflection although it doesn't look like it uh, at first glance. This is a very highly polished, shiny finish. And moving around to the front again, you can see 
uh, the position of the lid is at maximum here and we've got hinges on the right hand side here that we're going to get a really good look at. I'm going to go low down to show you how much these speaker housings protrude from the uh, panelling on the inside and they're slightly concave as well. So looking at the lid from the left hand side of the piano again you can see our ceiling panels in there because the finish is so highly reflective. I'm going to go close up to these hinges and give you an idea of how well they're machined and how well finished off they are. And there's no squeaking. You don't notice any squeaking or any friction when you open and close this uh, top. But also a thoughtful little touch on the left hand side as you look at it there is this uh, rubber uh, sheath that is put on the side to stop any interference with this polished finish. Um, and again, it's just indicative of the attention to detail that uh, Yamaha put into this design. So the finish itself is going to be very well protected. And I want you to look at the thickness of the top now. This is quite a piece of wood on the top, quite thick and quite heavy too. Um, when you lift it up and you take it off of the pole here, uh, a little bit like when you're opening or closing your bonnet, you want to be super duper careful. And I found it quite difficult to do with uh, holding a camera in one hand, but I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, I want to show the inside, the hinges on the inside here. Again, this, this is some heavy duty uh, hinges and these aren't made to last. Everything Yamaha do with their digital pianos is high quality like this and there's no scrimping around the edges. It is all very robust and made to last a long time. Note there are two positions here for the pole and I've got it set currently in this video to the most open position. <clears throat> but you can change it. Uh, actually, let's have a close up of the interior of the pole uh, housing here. I'm going to move it to the secondary position in just a moment, which is not an easy thing to do when you're holding a camera. So apologies for the wobbling. There we go. So it's now on the end position and purpose of that would be um, you change it to depending on the size of the audience you've got and how big the hall is. Um, but this is quite heavy to do. You really do notice the weight of this top when you pick it up. Uh, you can just about do it with one hand, but really I would recommend doing it with two hands and just being careful when you lower it down here. That is the secondary pole um, because you can, have, you can play with the lid closed, but you can also play with it in a uh, partially open position. And that is what that little pole there is for. So you lay the big pole down like that and the partial pole meets it just there and changes the look of the piano and of course the sound. It, from the player's perspective, you get a, a, a richer sound because some of the sound is able to escape from the, um, uh, the, the back of the piano. But the audience, of course, you would play it like this if you didn't have an audience to play to. Um, and it does muffle the sound ever so slightly but lets some of it through. You can play it with the lid closed but that muffles the sound. It doesn't let some of the treble and the top through and the, the middle through as much but it's sometimes quite nice to change the character of the sound uh, completely by having the lid in different positions. Now let's have a look um, around with the lid completely closed now. So coming in from the front, and again, it's designed to look identical to a concert grand piano from this angle as you're sat at it. But of course, it's not going nine foot deep, it's going just over four foot. So more like a baby grand in its depth, much more convenient for playing in the house. And slightly higher shot there, so you can see the lid joins and is fitted very well to the front of the piano. And as we come round to the right hand side here, look at the Clavanova logo there and the 
how narrow it is really in the, in the body of the piano and the tripod leg system. Two legs at the front there, one at the back slightly offset and there is one, uh, the pedal unit is the thing in the middle that we're going to have a close look at shortly. So the lid completely closed and it meets the body of the piano perfectly and again this is all to do with having heavy duty high quality hinges because any sort of change with those hinges is going to cause the lid not to sit properly but this is definitely built to last and I quite like this angle on the left hand side with the logo there and the, um, the curvature of the legs as well. So going a little bit closer at the logos on this piano, uh, this is from the left hand side. We have the classic Yamaha there with the metronomes in the, uh, the symbol on the left. And this is where we have the Yamaha logo at the face of the piano. And this is just as you will see on the nine foot concert grand pianos from Yamaha. On the left here, you have the Clavinova logo where the touch panel is, and I'll get into the touch panel a little bit later on. So you've got Clavinova there, and apologies for the dust, but it is worth noting that I did dust the piano before shooting this video, but it does attract the dust. But if you use the right type of polish, it's much, much better and the right type of cloth. This is on the right hand side where we've got Yamaha Clavinova again. And I'm going to get very, very close to the uh, lettering on here and give you an idea of how it's joined. And I could definitely feel that underneath my finger. In fact, the lint cloth that um, we'd used on this had probably wasn't the right one to use because you can see there it had just started to stick there onto the um, lettering of the piano. but it's easily, um, with the right type of cloth, removed. And kept looking nice and shiny. So overall, a pretty minimalist design. Clavinova logos on the left and the right of the piano and one just below the touch panel, the Yamaha Classic logo on the face of the piano and the model number on the right next to the volume control. Now the three pedal unit we have below here, um, three pedals as you would get on a concert grand piano and I'm going to get very close to these as you can see they're metal and again uh, notice the red felt above the pedal housings there to protect them and underneath there is a device which uh, allows you to tighten the springs on them slightly and to keep this whole mechanism steady. Now, if you're wondering if that looks a bit flimsy, you can take my word for it that it does not move an inch as you press down on it. This is very well machined indeed with its uh, two sets of large stanchions at the front and the two reinforcing ones just behind it. Uh, this is a very well made bit of kit and solid for your feet and going behind it you can see how it joins the underside of the piano and again now this of course some things that we need under here to screw it into the bottom of the piano and some wiring as well but it's still pretty minimalist you can see where the pedal unit uh, joins the top of the piano or the body of the piano rather on the underside um, and it's all quite neatly done And we'll get a really close look at where the stanchions join that bottom uh, pedal unit there. And again, all screws, all hinges are reinforced, good quality, and like everything Yamaha digital pianos, built to last. And that box just behind there, um, in the middle of this shot, contains the power unit. Oh, this is where the 
pedal unit itself connects so it goes into the top of the piano and this wire would usually be, I haven't peeled off the uh, sticker on here yet, but that would, uh, they come with these little uh, clips that allow you to keep the cables neatly fastened to the top of the underside uh, of the piano, to the bottom of the underside of the piano. And that is where the pedal unit goes in. And this is the power supply. So. Uh, it's all housed up here and you can see uh, where it connects into the main part of the piano there and it's cable tied it's just a, a pretty standard power socket like that and again we've cable tied it up to keep it looking neat and to not dangle down you can do quite a neat job with that and it goes into this power pack here and on the other side what you use is a standard UK figure of eight cable. There it is. So this is where the power plugs in. Uh, it's nice and solidly fixed up there as well. And again, you would use the um, little sticky tabs to hold the wire on the underside there to keep it looking neat. Uh, now I want you to look at the feet of the piano, the very bottom of the legs. You note this nice silver finish to go with the um, pedals. We're going to get a close-up uh, of that. The tops of the legs, notice how they are curved as they join the uh, underside of the piano in a very nice design, but at the bottom I quite like this, quite a nice little touch, so reflective the silver that it's, uh, it really uh, shows up our carpet quite nicely doesn't it? But this is repeated on all three legs and it's a really nice touch to keep it looking uh, classical and you get this on all three of the legs. And we'll go and have a close up of this one too shall we? And again, it uh, looks almost almost uh, transparent, doesn't it? It's just reflecting our carpet, but really nice little touch. So coming to the uh, full of the piano, uh, or the lid, and this comes out uh, in a pretty easy way that you pull out by yourself and it feels nice and smooth when you do it and again it also has some weight to it too. Uh, the polished ebony finished is go goes all over the lid here. You see the logo reflected in there too and I'm going to give you a close-up of how it sits in its closed position. The front does have an extra little lid on it there that covers up the keys and there's a groove on the underside here and you can lift up, get the lid open very easily and it slides back on those runners there. And the action is all very, very smooth. Uh, I'm gonna put it halfway up and give you a view from the side there. And it just glides back, revealing the keys and the volume control there on the right hand side and then sits with a fairly satisfying clunk at the top, no danger of coming out by itself because it sits in a groove. And again, to bring it out, you can very easily get your finger underneath that groove in the front of it and bring it out to the closed position. And here it is uh, in the closed position. That's what it looks like as it goes back in. So when it's fully closed, again, it sits very neatly there and that's how it comes out nice and smooth and use the dust cover use the lid to keep the dust off in between playing which you should do with the top of the piano as well just to keep the dust off the keys and from going in between the keys now we have here a headphone hanger which is a thoughtful touch being digital of course you can play this piano uh, with headphones and no one else can hear you play and you actually have two sockets so you can duet with somebody in complete silence as well and you can both hear each 
hear what each other are playing and those are sat thoughtfully under the left hand side. Now on the right hand side, on the underside of the piano, we have the uh, inputs and outputs of which we have the auxiliary outs which are uh, jacks on the right, the mini jack input, auxiliary pedal there if you want to have a volume pedal plugged in, MIDI in and out, traditional MIDI sockets, USB to host and USB to device. So transferring music to and from this piano, everything is catered for there um, that you could think of. If you play with sheet music, then you're going to find this interesting. This is the music rest, which as you can see, sits up at a convenient angle here. Again, it's a quite a piece of um, wood there uh, sat back quite a thick piece of wood quite um, solid and it's held up with these hinges and one on each side there and I'm going to demonstrate how you would put this down flat because to change the appearance of the piano if you don't have need for the music rest you can just flip these music rest clips uh, upwards and then lay the whole thing down flat just like this. So it sits down just like that and the oh, it's worth mentioning actually that uh, if I'm going to get the camera down low here so it doesn't just smash into the top of the piano there it quite neatly leaves a little gap so you don't have to worry about damaging the finish on the um, top of the piano there and this changes the look of the piano again so as you're sat at the face of the piano it's I quite like it in this configuration but it's nice that you can sort of customize the look of it uh, in the many different ways the music rest being just one of them so here's the shot from the front as well now how do you hold your sheet music book open we have music clip music clip holders here and these hold the pages of your books open and they sit in these little housings here so you can have them down flat and I've just bought them both up but very easily can be sat down flat so as not to um, interfere with the appearance of the front of the piano and let's get a close up at the material on the bottom here which is a nice felt which also does quite a good job incidentally of holding the pages of the book open depending on how much wear your book has had if it's new of course um, the spine on it's going to uh, probably require these clips to keep the pages open but it gets to a point as all pianists will know where your book will hold itself open in which case the felt will do the trick quite nicely of holding it solid and stopping the pages from um, closing uh, mid-performance. On the right hand side of the piano we have the volume slider and the on and off switch um, and the CLP795GP uh, model number. So the slider just there and the on and off switch here. When you turn it on there's you have to hold it down for a second. You have to hold it down for a second as well when you turn it off uh, just to stop you accidentally turning it off. Yamaha have figured after user feedback that that's quite the best way to do it so you don't accidentally uh, touch the button and turn it off mid-song. When you turn the piano on uh, this is what you will see. The touch panel on the left hand side comes on initially for a few seconds and it, every time you do turn it on it resets to Yamaha CFX Concert Grand Piano mode and then it will disappear just like you've seen there giving again the piano this classical look without uh, lights on there. The only light that stays on while you're uh, in this configuration is the on switch, quite a subtle light there on the right hand side. Let's go back to the touch panel. Now I like this, um, you only have to touch it anywhere once and up come the controls here uh, showing on the LCD screen at the top the piano, the instrument that you've currently got selected and that was the length of time it takes for it to go away so it was only about 10-15 seconds for the touch panel to disappear. These are the controls, very sensitive as I switch between the different types of piano and go between a few of the menus. Um, it's instant the uh, response that you get. Not a touch screen, 
controlled with these arrows here and these buttons here. These two ones you see highlighted in white are the two main pianos, the Yamaha CFX Grand and the Bosendorfer Imperial Grand and that's why they're highlighted there because most of the time you would just switch between them but you do have your um, dual mode and split mode and piano room and recording option there as well and I'm just going to let it disappear and let's get a really good close-up of this again so I touched it there and everything returns the only thing that remains when the um, panel goes off is the Clavinova logo just there and just touch it anytime you want to change something and it comes back immediately and again getting really close up to this because from the playing position you cannot see anything on there at all once it goes but you can see it very very close up subtly it's still there but from a playing position you just do not notice it at all but I think this is really nicely done actually it works very well at keeping the look classical but gives you the functionality of a modern digital piano as well so well done design team at Yamaha so that's just about it for our tour of the CLP 795 GP if you can think of any questions just leave them in the comments section below and we'll get right back to you but I hope that was helpful